So today we're going to take a look at how to set up our own AI sales trainer, Wolf of Wall Street style. And here's what I mean. Oftentimes I've see a lot around the internet that you can build your own kind of custom GPT, but it's all very abstract and it's just somebody, it's just a GPT that you can ask advice for. But in my case, what I'm trying to do is I'm trying to get AI to advise me on the next step of a particular sales deal. So we're going to see how it performs today. Of course, I'm using Airtable and make.com. So yeah, there's some affiliate links down in the description below. Let's see how this goes. And believe me when I say the results are really, really interesting. So stick with me till the end. So if you're new here, hi, my name is Alex. And here on this channel, we talk about AI. We talk about no codes and how to get AI into no code. Without any further ado, let's get started. So if you've been following the channel for a while now, you probably know how this works. We're first going to take a look at a quick demo of the system, just so that you understand the experience of the user within Airtable. Then we're going to take a look at how the database is set up. I'm not going to really go over all the details. The whole point here is the automation, the prompt engineering that goes behind the scenes that gives us the ability to fetch that data. So yeah. Let's take a look. What I have in front of me is an Airtable database, and it's a very, very simple CRM. I'm probably going to do another video about how to set this up, but ultimately what we have is just a bunch of companies, contacts, and we have our deals. This is where the stuff happens. Basically, we have our interactions, which is all the interactions that I've had with the company, and then we also have our tasks. Now, in my deals table, I just have one deal and of course you can have a lot of deals, but right now, just for the sake of the example, we only have one deal. And what I'm going to do is I'm going to press this little button that's called AI sales coach analysis. And what is happening behind the scenes right now is that ChatGPT is taking a look at all the data that we've got about this deal, its value, how long has it been active, all the interactions, all the tasks, everything up surrounding that deal. And now it has given us a bit of advice about what we need to do next. And as you can also see, it's rating that advice in terms of urgency. So right now this is five out of five on the scale of urgency. And we have just a basic scale, you know, back burner, normal, medium, urgent, urgent, and very urgent. And now we've got our advice. And the advice goes something like this. Schedule the follow-up call for the ninth, so today, basically, utilizing the straight line system emphasis on controlling the sale and keeping the conversation between the boundaries of certainty and uncertainty. This call should aim to address blah, 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 blah. And it's really giving us the correct sales training advice based on the particulars of this particular deal, but also take into consideration that we are using the straight line system philosophy that Jordan Belfort was kind of like discovered and wrote books about it. And it's all very, very cool. Go and check him out. Very, very interesting stuff. That's basically how the system works. And my general idea was that this could run something like in the morning, right before you come to the office, the system can just go through all of your deals and can give you the AI advice on how to get every single deal to the next step in the process. And at the end of the day, I was also thinking that it would be a cool idea to have something like a little digest where it can see what you've done that day in terms of actions and interactions and give you like a quick little summary in an email. But yeah, I haven't really developed that. If you want me to do that, if you want me to show you how that can be done, leave a comment down below. Without any further ado, let's take a look at how the database is set up. Okay, so the database is a very straightforward CRM. There's really nothing special going on. We just have a table for companies where we just have some basic fields, industry, size, location, the contacts people, the deals that are related to it, and of course, the contacts in general. So for instance, we have Jane Smith, who is the contact person for Beta LLC, 
but we can also see that Emily Davis is also part of the contacts for that company. Then we have our table of contacts. Again, just super straightforward, nothing, nothing more, nothing less than what's required from a basic CRM, just some notes about who that person is, and that's basically that. Then we have deals. So deals is where all the action happens. We just have a deal name, the company that it relates to, we have our trigger, we also have our long text where AI gives us its opinions. And then we also have our urgent omitter. AI gives us that figure. So we need somewhere to print that. We have the deal value, the stage, all the related interactions, the last interaction date, status, and all the related tasks. Interactions, nothing really special here. We just have all of our interactions in regards to what deal, the contact, who we spoke with, dates, the type, the outcome, and the notes, of course, of that interaction. We also have a quick couple of fields that basically tell us whether or not an interaction is the latest one, but I'll probably cover that in another video where we're gonna unpack this whole CRM because I feel like this is one of the biggest requests right now, just simple, basic CRMs. We're gonna talk about that later, but for now, for the purposes of this demo, you don't really need it. Uh, and then finally, tasks, just a bunch of tasks that we did in regards to, again, the deal and the contact, who it's assigned to, description and, and so forth. So yeah, that's it in terms of the basic database setup. Now, let's go into meat and potatoes of this whole thing, which is the automation that runs behind the scenes. All right, so by now you probably know, well, I don't know, if you're new, you probably don't know, but ultimately here on the channel, Whenever we're dealing with Airtable or some kind of database, we typically tend to trigger things in the same way. There, we we want to be able to um, just press a button and then something happens. Uh, of course, this can all be scheduled, but ultimately for the purposes of the demo, we usually use the same method. And that method is just by checking a checkbox and then sending our request to make.com. So let me break this down for you. First and foremost, you need a checkbox in your database. Then jump into automations and create a automation like so, where the trigger is in the deals table when AI sales coach is checked, then we run a script. Just feel free to copy paste this particular script with one exception. Over here, we have a webhook URL. This webhook URL needs to be replaced by the one that make.com gives you. So don't go using mine, it won't work. Also, don't forget to map your record ID just like I've done here in the input variables. And don't forget to map the Airtable record ID variable into the value field, into the value placeholder. That's it. Once you're done and your setup looks like this, then press finish editing and don't forget to turn on your automation. Once it's turned on, then let's jump into make. The next thing that you need to do here is actually quite simple. You can see that this is nowhere near some of the wilder, <laughs> crazier scenarios that we've unpacked over the last few months. Let me take you through this. This is actually quite straightforward. So first and foremost, we have webhooks, just a webhook module. This is the URL that you need to copy and paste into your automation trigger and uh, sorry and yeah into this script of the trigger once you do that that's that so just copy this address paste it over there in that place then the next step is to actually get that deal so we're using a uh, get a record module and we're just basically mapping that record id that we get from the webhook inside of this get a record module once we get that record, then we have two simple tasks that we need to do. We need to fetch all the interactions. And this is quite simple. I'm basically looking for my deal record ID inside of the interactions table. And there is a field in there. Let's see. So in interactions, you'll see that I've got some hidden fields. And I basically am looking up the deal record ID from my deal record, right? Straightforward. Once that's done, then I'm basically coming in here and I'm saying that the deal record ID in interactions, because that's where I am right now, is equal to the ID from my deal record that I've just fetched. So by the same exact token, we are doing the, the fetch tasks thing. But before I get there, let's just finish with this, where I'm also taking that data and I'm aggregating it into a big, nice text. 
which kind of looks at the end of the day kind of like this. It's quite packed, but ultimately what I'm doing is I'm creating a single piece of text that includes all the interactions for that deal. And this is roughly what the setup looks like. I'm saying that my source module is number three, my row separator is other, and more specifically, it's a comma. Then I have my date and I'm mapping in the date. I'm then mapping, I'm saying type, and then I'm mapping in the type. Outcome, notes, and that's it. Once you're ready, just press OK. It should look like this. Then we have fetch tasks. Same exact deal, just like we had in interactions. Now we're doing tasks. In this case, again, in tasks, we have a deal record ID. There it is. That's just the record ID from the deal. And then I'm just basically again comparing the deal record ID in tasks to the deal record ID itself from module number two. And that basically allows me to fetch all the tasks just for that particular deal. I'm doing kind of like the same number here where I have the task due date and then the task due date, the pipe, task description and task status all again packaged up, comma separated, just like we did in module number four. So yeah, that again creates big chunk of text. Well, not so big, but ultimately you get the sense of what we're doing. So then this is what you've been waiting. So this is how I've done my prompt. As you can see, I'm using ChatGPT 4 0.125, which was released just yesterday. And the system prompt looks something like this. By the way, I'm using a create a completion prompt just so that we're clear. And my system prompt goes something like this. You're a Savant business sales coach with 30 years of experience in training sales professional and advising on sales deals, right? Great. Then we have our user role, and then it looks something like this, where I can see all my deal details, which I'm mapping from mainly module number two, the deal ID, the company, the deal value, current stage, and so forth. Then I have my existing tasks timeline, and I'm mapping my tasks text, basically. Then we have existing interactions timeline. Again, that's just all that interactions text mapped in there. Then I have your response in desired formatting. And you can see here how I'm saying urgency level, number, a dash, and then your thoughts on what the trainee sales rep should do next. My mission looks like this. Well, my prompt for the mission <laughs> of AI looks like this. Based on provided details, can you su suggest the next steps? As per the requested formatting, give us the urgency level, Finally, I'm also like slipstreaming here the philosophy so that its suggestions are kind of filtered through the specific sales system that my company follows so that it makes sense to the sales guy. I'm also saying take your time to think your answers through. It's a good practice to basically tell it to take its time basically and not just spit out anything that it wants. Then I'm also as usual, adding my little phrase, it basically cleans up the answers. This particular phrase, do not add any conversational language. I've set the temperature to 0 0.7, but you can play around with this. I noticed that it obviously does its job. 0 0.3 was too little. My personal preference was between 5, 6, and 7. So 7 obviously gives you more data, more details. Maybe it's a little bit too much for you, but play around with that. See what your responses are for this. So yeah, that's basically it. And then finally, when it comes to updating Airtable, this is all that there is to it. I'm using an update a record module. Then I have my record ID mapped from module number two. Then we have our AI sales coach advice, which is kind of like I'm using replace here because I want to make sure that the message that we get from ChatGPT and more specifically this part here, that this whole part is stripped of this number five. I just want it to be one clean text. And the way to do that is by using the replace module over here. So I'm replacing in this text, I'm using split get functions to extract the number from that text. And I'm basically replacing this particular number with an empty string. And that will basically give us a clean message being printed in. Then the next thing that is kind of interesting to note is the urgent ometer. So I'm basically using a switch expression 
that extracts that number that we just replaced with nothing, like so, I'm just using switch. This is what I want to switch based on. So if the value is one, then it will print one dash back burner. Then if the value is two, it will print two dash normal. If the value is three, it will print three medium urgent. If the value is four, and you see where I'm going with this. Nothing else goes into this particular final step. This is basically it in terms of the automation. So that's it guys. Thank you so much for watching. Hopefully you've enjoyed this particular AI sales coach automation. I'm planning to expand this a little bit. So there might be a version two where we daisy chain our ai bots prompts call automations call them whatever so that not only will it give us the advice and you can read it but it can also create maybe records maybe tasks maybe future interactions that it is suggesting that we do watch out for that and if you are interested do let me know in the comments that's it for me thank you so much for watching this and i'll see you in the next one cheers